Today's video will demonstrate the creation of a jazz piano arrangement of everybody's favorite tune, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We'll start with this simple lead sheet, which only gives us the melody and the most basic of harmonies. Every chord here is a major triad, although we do have the dominant seventh as well. The only other inconsistency is the slash chord, that's the C major over G, which indicates that a C major triad is over G in the bass. Now you might think of this as a C major triad in second inversion, 6-4 position. But since the C over G always precedes the dominant 7th, uh, we want to think of that as the cadential 6-4 instead. Uh, here I've provided the Roman numerals for these pop chord symbols. Okay, step one is to realize this lead sheet using the triads and dominant 7ths implied by the pop chord symbols. I recommend first filling in the chords in close position to the melody, like this. I mean, this is very nice, but it doesn't sound jazzy at all. So let's try to add some color. Let's make every single chord a seventh chord. So the, all of the C and F major triads are now major seventh chords. And all the G dominant chords were already sevenths. That sounds like this. It's already more interesting, but uh, whenever the root of the major seventh chord is in the melody, there's a minor second that's created between the chordal seventh and the melody. That seems a little bit awkward orally. Uh, for example, the very first chord is now a major seven, but the melody is on scale degree one, the root of the chord. This creates a minor second between the major seventh and the melody, and that's a lot of dissonance. So in our current version, uh, this happens actually quite a bit. In the first four measures alone, I see it happening three times. In measure five, it happens on the F major seven again. By the way, uh, measures 7 and 8 are identical to measures 5 and 6, and the last four measures, measures 9 through 12, are the same as the first four measures. Okay, what can we do to eliminate this strange dissonance? Well, a common way to add color to a triad, other than making it a seventh chord, is to add a sixth instead. So on the initial C major chord, instead of adding the B, which is what produces that unwanted dissonance, we could add the A. That's a sixth above the C. This often adds just a dash of color, just a little bit of dissonance uh, without altering its function. So I'm going to replace all of the major seventh chords that have the root in the melody with this added sixth chord. That sounds like this. I mean, we're getting there, right? It's sounding smoother all the time. But here's another simple trick to add harmonic variety. Find a voicing, a hand position, and just keep it. <laughs> In the first four measures, for example, my right hand is actually only using two different voicings. The first chord 
The voicing in the right hand is a third, then a second, and then another third, spanning a sixth. This voicing happens uh, five times in the first four measures. Now we first find the only other voicing in the right hand in the second chord of the first measure. It has a second, a third, and a third, also spanning a sixth. This voicing occurs three times in the opening four measures. Actually, in its current state, the whole tune only uses these two right hand voicings. So as an experiment, I'm going to replace all of these second types of right handed voicings. I've got them marked in red on the score. I'm going to replace them with the first type, those marked in blue. Now you might think that this is going to remove too much variety, but in reality, it will add new harmonic flavors. That's going to sound like this. Now this type of voice motion is using all parallel intervals. Uh, we more specifically call this style of parallel motion planing. All right? It's really easy to play. You just create this hand gesture and you just move it in a straight line. Uh, it, it is a wonderful way to find new harmonic colors. And uh, understand that I'm, I'm not, I'm fishing for options here. I'm not suggesting that my final draft will incorporate every one of these changes. I'm going to pick and choose from all these different options. So everywhere that I have uh, changed the voicing, I've added a chordal ninth each time. Now this is a especially nice addition for the dominant seventh chords. Up till now they've remained unaltered, but now I've added a ninth to all of those chords. In jazz, it's, uh, it's rare to remain diatonic. For so long, so I'm going to start introducing some chromaticism. I might want to tonicize another key, for example, but uh, I'm not going to change the melody, so uh, I'm going to be a bit limited. There are a few options that are going to be available to us. For example, uh, from measure one to measure two, we move from a one chord to a four chord, the C to an F. We can intensify this harmonic motion to the subdominant by immediately preceding the F with its dominant. Well, what's the dominant of F? Well, it's C. So this simply involves turning the second chord of measure one into a C dominant seventh. That's what we started with. Let's turn it into a dominant seventh. Yeah, do you hear the difference? It's subtle, but it's interesting. Now I might do something similar in measures uh, 2 to 3. C again is leading to F, but instead of only converting the C into the dominant, this time I'm going to substitute a 2-5 progression in its place. So F is going to be our harmonic goal, our temporary tonic. So a 2-5-1 in the key of F is going to be a G minor 7, and then a C dominant going to F. That's going to sound this way. In measure five, uh, I'm going to change the, the bass note from the F in the uh, four chord. I'm going to turn that four chord into a two chord by putting a D in the bass. That'll create a two five progression uh, with measure six. So I had this before, but I'm going to change it so I have this. In measures uh, 10 to 11, I could just repeat what I did in measures 2 and 3, but I want something fresher. I need a variation of whatever I did in the first half. So instead of a 2-5-1 in F, I'm going to replace the 4 chord in measure 11 with a 2 chord. So uh, a D minor chord. I'll create a 2-5-1 progression at the very end. It'll sound this way. Then I'm going to insert a 2-5-1 in the key of D minor to tonicize that new 2 chord. That'll, the last four measures sound this way now. A 
Okay, all together, we currently have this. Okay, finally, I'm just going to add a little bit of syncopation, a little rhythmic variety. Harmonically, I've incorporated a little bit from all the different passes we've made up to this point. Um, there are a few things that I've changed uh, that we've not talked about yet, but let me play through it, and then I'll make some final comments about my results. Alright, in measures 5 and 6, I have the right hand doing that planing motion down, and I decided to have the bass line move in stepwise contrary motion with that right hand. Then on the repeat in measures 7 and 8, I, I decorate the melody first with a little chromatic passing motion, and then I use something that's called sidestepping in measure 8. So the harmonic goal in measure 8 is the dominant, that's the G chord. So I overshoot that goal a half step by landing on an A-flat chord first. But I keep the melody, and then that wants to resolve desperately to G, which of course it does. Let me demonstrate this sidestepping technique uh, on the final cadence of the tune. So instead of resolving to the final tonic chord, um, let, me, let me have the melody resolve to 1, scale degree 1, but I'm going to overshoot that chord. So instead of landing on a C, I'm going to overshoot it by a half step to D flat, a half step too high. And then of course that will ultimately resolve where we want it to go. Okay, I'm gonna play it uh, one last time. I'll add a short little introduction based on the uh, measures five through eight. Yeah. I'm going to post a PDF of all these different versions onto Blackboard. That way, if you're interested, uh, you can study them a little more thoroughly. Thanks.